Hey everyone, I've been asked a very common question, which is, what exactly is my YouTube channel about? Is it for university students? Is it about business in general? And the answer is both. I hope to give advice to incoming University of Toronto students, talk about the Rotten Commerce program, but at the same time, you know, also talk about issues that I believe are prevalent to all business students, whether it's personal finances, investing, uh, the Canadian stock market. So I hope to cover all of those business aspects uh, in my YouTube channel. Uh, I also hope to upload twice a week, hopefully Mondays and Fridays, if possible more, but at the moment that will be like my default. So without further ado, I'll get into the video. So I've been asked a lot of questions regarding Rothman Commerce courses, so I've decided to make an official, I mean unofficial, Rothman Commerce mini-series where I do course reviews for all of the Rothman courses that I've taken so far, hopefully give you, you know, an idea of what you can expect going into university and to prepare in advance. So I'll be talking about the difficulty of the classes, um, what we learned, some study tips to help you succeed in them, and that's what I'll be covering in these, you know, mini uh, series. So in this video, I'll be talking about Eco 101, which is the principles of microeconomics. So I took this course in my first semester of my first year with the professor James Pizzando. Overall, I had a great experience. Uh, I really enjoyed the professor and the class, you know, ran smoothly. So it was very chronological in that sense. Also, a quick reminder, for you to make it second year of Rutman Commerce, you need to get at least a 63% in Eco 101. And I actually have my notebook right here. So, my notebook. And pretty much, the main topics that were covered were perfect competition, uh, monopoly, oligopoly, opportunity cost, economies of scale, supply and demand, shifts in the supply and demand, and then externalities. So it covers a lot of different things. For those of you who did take um, economics in the IB, it kind of prepares you for economics because you learn the fundamentals. Just because you took IB doesn't necessarily mean that Eco 101 is going to be easy because I know some people who did not do IB and did amazingly well in economics. So just your background in economics doesn't really indicate whether or not you'll you know, do well in the course. But if you put effort into it, you can definitely get a good mark. So in the difficulty scale from 1 to 10, I would probably put Econ, uh, Eco 101, as around an 8-ish. So it's pretty challenging. It's a definitely a challenging course. You just have to you know, stay on top of your academics. Don't fall behind on coursework. Pay attention in lectures. Go over past papers and review your notes. And that will you know, definitely help you um, do well in the class because it is possible. You just have to put in a lot of effort but it's definitely something that's manageable. So in terms of class sizes, this is probably the biggest one. We were around 500 students uh, for each section, and I believe there were three sections with the same prof. So it, definitely the biggest class size. So I recommend sitting you know, somewhere towards the front where you can pay attention. But yeah, it's kind of overwhelming if you're new to university, but you'll get used to it after a while. So my study tips for Eco 101 is to go over the past papers. So your professor will likely give you some previous uh, tests that have been uh, done in the past and go through them carefully, make sure you fully understand the answer and what he expects from you when showing your explanation and thought process. And that will definitely put you a step ahead when it comes to writing the final because you're already used to the layout of the exam, what kind of questions they'll put. So definitely do past papers that really helped me prepare for uh, the, the exams and midterms. Then I also recommend doing um, mind maps and also flashcards. That's because I'm kind of a visual learner, so it really depends on your learning style. But for me, that definitely worked, especially when learning supply and demand, because it's very easy to see how it relates to the different um, shifts and apply all of the different class content into a visual diagram and have it all laid out neatly. So it really depends on what kind of learning suits you best. So that's my biggest recommendation, past papers for sure. So this concludes my first mini-series where I talk about Eco 101, the principles of microeconomics. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. If you have any questions about the course, please leave them down below. And if you already took the course, feel free to talk about your experience also in the comments section, and I'm happy to hear your thoughts on it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys.